Infants were being killed. Well, you know, children mm, were being killed. That's what I'm the not, multiple that's what verses I mean. I'm not, say. That. I'm not sure about that. Now you're you're questioning the clear wording of the verse. Uh, the, the only way that you can criticize Islamic expansionism is if you throw your entire tradition under the bus. In All the Torah, you have these commands which talk about wiping people out. And God says He's going to wipe them out here, but then He explains what it means. I'm going to drive them out little by little over time. I'm not saying there's no killing. So if you're saying there's killing, yes. Uh, as far as these groups being completely exterminated and all their children killed, I'm saying the Bible refutes that interpretation. Come on, this is this is massive amount of desperation. The idea that a Christian is supposed to say, you know what, I've been commanded, love everyone, love my enemies, um, uh, that I'm supposed to do good to everyone, pray for everyone, honor everyone, and this means that I'm supposed to follow you the honor you Old honor Testament Piss Christ. Christ. You mm -hmm. honor the odds. Do you honor the artist who made Piss Christ? I said. I said. I said in my own. I said in my opening statement that as far as that person is a uh, human being created in the image of God, that person is worthy of a certain level of love and respect. But that we do not have oh. to. Uh, we do not have to uh, love what they do or honor what they do. We can. We can condemn what they do. And rebuke them for what we do and tell them how horrible they are for what they do. But uh, there are certain things that, that we, if given the opportunity, I wouldn't kill him. I wouldn't kill them. Um, yeah, well, I, because because that person's created in the image of God. Whereas I suspect, and we could, th those of you who are uh, Muslims, the Canaanites were, were also those of you Muslims created in were, the image of God. The Amalek were also created in the image of God. The heretics that the Christian church eradicated in the early centuries of Christianity, they were also created in the image of God. That didn't stop them from killing them. Um, if you're talking about Christians doing it, Christians had no, Christians yeah, had Christians no business. Doing, no. Christians, Christians, had, and Christians had no business doing the followers it. followers of Moses. If you're talking about Moses, again, that's a different situation. By the way, this is kind of a side note. Um, all the groups that you say were, were genocided are, are there later. You might want to do a I didn't answer. use the word genocide. You used the word genocide. Um, no, I heard you somewhere else use the word genocide. In this debate? Uh, no, in a clip you posted on, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not committed to the word genocide if you okay. want to niggle over that. I mean, infants were being killed. Well, <laughs> you know, children mm, were being killed. That's what I'm the not, multiple that's what verses I mean. I'm not, say that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Now you're you're questioning the the interpret or the clear wording of the verse. Uh, th there's a there's a reason for that. Let, let me let me give you let me give you uh, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Um, but while you're getting that example, let me just say that yes, Islam is expansionist. In in many videos, I have uh, defended this. I think Christianity has been expansionist. Judaism has been expansionist. It seems like all monotheistic faiths. Abrahamic faiths have been expansionist. It's only these liberalized um, Christians like David Wood who take a, this kind of human rights interpretation of of the of the Bible. But all of these religions have been expansionist. And the idea, because I want to interpret the Old Testament in the most charitable way. I'm not endorsing everything because of, in the Old Testament because I think there's been corruption in it. But the idea of spreading the word of God and establishing true justice, you cannot have true justice without belief in God and submission to God. And this is the message in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. It's in the uh, Quran. And the idea is very simple. You want to establish the justice of God. And there is no justice when people are worshiping Satan, when people are worshiping uh, idols, false gods. And so this is something that has to be addressed in the world. And in Islam, this is something very clear in the Old Testament, in Judea, in the Orthodox Jewish tradition. This is something very clear. And in Christianity, it has been very clear. The only way that you can criticize Islamic expansionism is if you throw your entire tradition under the bus. Uh, this is in Exodus 23. And you start to see the issue here where I'm saying uh, I'm not sure about certain things. Um so God says, verse 22, if you listen carefully to what he says and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. My angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. So this is the an extermination passage. God is going to wipe them out. Uh, Verse 24, do not bow down to their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. 
Worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. So this is like talking about the ongoing miracles and why these people are so responsible um, for rebelling against him. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. I will establish your borders, and I've already quoted this. I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the desert to the Euphrates River. I will give into your hands the people who live in the land, and you will drive them out before you. And so this is the point I'm making over and over and over again. In the Torah, you have these commands which talk about wiping people out. They're going to wipe them out. And God says he's going to wipe them out here, but then he explains what it means. I'm going to drive them out little by little over time. And this is something that you see over and over and over again, that we do... The way we use language, those mean two completely different things. Saying wipe out everything that breathes is very different from saying uh, drive someone off the land. Isn't Jesus the one who's commanding this, though? So where how do you reconcile Jesus's apparently universal ethic about not raise you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But it's Jesus as part of the triune God in the Old Testament also saying, fine, let's let me just concede the border issue and, and all of these little things that you're adding to uh, the interpretation, which is again not shared by other commentators. Uh, fine, let me concede all of that. Uh, it's still Jesus who's commanding wiping out all of these people and or driving them, I should say, driving them out of their homes, driving them out. Uh, so how does that reconcile with live by the sword, die by the sword? Well, I mean, you no, know, if you look, this is there, there's God's judgment on these people, right? I mean, the, the, the accusations against them are things like child sacrifice, bestiality, things like that. And God sends them a prophet. And for four why centuries, why, why, why isn't that tolerated? Why doesn't Jesus tolerate that? It's your the, the, the uh, it, child sacrifice. OK, the, the babies that mm-hmm. are being driven out, the women that are being dry, driven out, mm-hmm. uh, they're all collectively responsible for some that are doing child sacrifice in uh, in this uh, amongst these people, but they're all being driven out, right? By Jesus, why doesn't he tolerate? Where's the tolerance there? Yeah, you're 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 thinking I'm saying something I'm not. I'm not. You're thinking I'm saying never punish anyone. I mean, I said it very clearly in my opening statement. Have no problem with proper authorities uh, punishing people. I have no problem with with God wiping us out if we want. That was not the point of anything I'm saying here. What I'm saying here is that the commands to wipe people out are used interchangeably with drive them off the land. And all of the groups, all of the groups that are supposedly wiped out, so that's the the Canaanites, the Midianites, and the Amalekites, all the groups that are supposedly wiped out are all there afterwards. And so... Uh, the way scholars interpret this is they're, they're using language in a, in a very different way from what we're using it at. Again, I have no problem with, with scholars. God. I mean, I'm citing all of these scholars who say that it means wiping out. Look at, you know, all Western scholars. They say Philip Jenkins, for example, laying down the sword. They all say that this means no, 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 not, genocide. Not, not on this issue. Yeah, on the, on the Amalek, on the Canaanites, on, on these tribes that are mentioned in those verses that we keep citing. The, um, those are no, all I, about genocide, I'm according saying, to these Western scholars. I no, there, you can say there's that an entire understand. there's an entire book by Paul Copan called "Did God Command Genocide?" where he goes through the issue. So the issue number one, which I mentioned, the command to completely exterminate are used interchangeably with commands to drive people off the land. So that should send up a flag. Wait a minute. Driving someone off the land is completely different from exterminating someone, and yet the Bible is using them interchangeably. That should make us think, hey, maybe there's something, maybe there's something going on here. But then we see this other pro- this other issue where the people, the people who all the groups that are supposedly wiped out are there later. And sometimes it's in the same chapter. Like Joshua goes up, uh, he conquers Jerusalem, he wipes out the Canaanites, and then the Canaanites are there. 
later in this in this in the same chapter, uh, the Amalekites are supposedly wiped out. I mean, you quote you quoted First Samuel, the Amalekites are supposedly wiped out by Saul. They were down to the last. So you're, you're saying that there's no killing involved in this. They're just not, driven not, off. Not, the, what not, does not, driven not, off the land mean? Uh, I mean, this is a, such a ridiculous interpretation. Like, there's so no, many. Look at you, Numbers you, 21. You ha- the destruction of King Sion and King Og. So they smote. They smote, and his son. Not saying that. Not saying. Og not saying son, there's no. Not all saying. His people. Not so saying there's killing. Not say, I'm not saying there's no. I'm not saying there's no killing. So if you're saying there's killing, yes. Uh, as far as these groups being completely exterminated and all their children killed, I'm saying the Bible refutes that interpretation because the groups are still there. Later. I didn't. I didn't make that interpretation. Right. I didn't use the word genocide. All I. All I'm pointing out is that there's mass violence. There's mass killing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Of, of children and infants. That's a, that, that's 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 where I'm that's where I'm having the problem. 